Hi, my name is Norman and today we're going to build a keyboard. So of course I'm talking about a custom keyboard and well there are let's say different levels of customization of keyboards. You know you could just buy a set of different keycaps and replace them on your keyboard. It's like the, the easiest way to, to customize it. Of course there's more. Well you can also you know go and get yourself a kit. You can buy every single component, the case, underglow, and a PCB and all that and a very nice keycap set by the way uh, my favorite at the moment and well going a little bit further is where we slowly start to move into nerd territory I mean even more than we have been already because here's something uh, this is basically where you just order the PCB and then you solder the switches right onto the PCB in the microcontroller. Uh, 3D printed housing. Um, this is actually a two-piece keyboard and I don't like it. That's why <laughs> we're gonna salvage the switches. More about that later. But let's say one step further is when you don't even order your PCB. You just solder it directly by hand. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today in this video at least it's not gonna be a one-day thing and well this has been a very very tedious process so this is actually my first time using a CNC router to be honest first time seeing one in real life so uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud of what came out well this one I messed it up but eventually I got it right you know looking from afar it actually looks pretty neat so uh, yeah this is my base plate. Again, I'm really, really proud that it actually came out halfway. Okay, <laughs> so uh, yeah, really, really cool. Also that thing is really cool. So the thing is because of the radius of my tool, um, of course I can't machine perfect 90 degree angles here and the switches, well, they need more or less perfect 90 degrees. Yeah, instead of having like a bazillion tool changes and work down the tool diameter, I'm just gonna take this these files here and use the square file. Come on. <laughs> and use that square file here to file out the holes. And it's a lot faster uh, than I expected to be honest. Boom, done. Like it's really quick. So here is, well, the remains of um, a very old project of mine. Um, that's a kit, sort of a kit, PCB, for the, I think it was called Iris version 2 or 4, I don't know, Iris. Um, it's very ergonomic because you can basically also place them like so. But from my experience, I just didn't enjoy it, so I actually never used it. Also, looking at the print, you can see here I painted it. Uh, because I thought uh, that would give it a smoother finish. Well, it does give it a smoother finish, but you can't save these bad Z-axis alignment here. I think it was also one of my very first prints. Never used it, probably also never will use it again. So what we're gonna do, I already started here, you can see. We're gonna salvage those uh, switches here because uh, those are Cherry MX Black and they're still good and that way we can use them in the new project. For that I got a specialized tool which is, well, dirty. But also uh, this is a desoldering pump I think it's called. Um, basically you press the button here and it clicks. You're gonna heat your uh, place you want to desolder and then you press and it, you see it's gonna suck up uh, the, the liquid solder and then uh, you know it's supposed to be gone. It, it sort of works but not always. If you have the money just go and order another set of those but um, you know custom stuff is always very expensive even though if you make everything by yourself. So we're gonna save money where we can. I'm going to use these two boards here so that it's not sitting on the switches and wobble around all the time. Let's put it here. Switch on the soldering iron already so that it can heat up and um, yeah we're gonna continue with that one here and I'm gonna zoom in so that you can actually see what's happening right oh that's it wait a second so by the way this PCB is as you can tell here from Kibio it, it's keep.io I think yeah, it takes a while until everything is liquid I uh, already pressed the button here in the back. What we're gonna do is hold it to uh, this, the place we heat it up and then just press it. 
and well it sort of worked so I'm gonna see if we can uh, just push it away without uh, needing to suck again yeah so this connection of the switch is loose now we're gonna do it the same with the other one it's liquid and then well suck it and there you go it's loose I'm still going to use a knife and just wiggle around these things to make sure that they're actually loose and then I use a screwdriver and just press it out and there you have it one little switch and a bunch more to go So, got all the switches of those PCBs, also cleaned up the remains of the Pro Micro microcontrollers. Well, it, here's one thing. Those two only gave me, I think, 56 switches and for my new keyboard I need 66. Also, I realized that I forgot to buy stabilizers. So, long story short, we cannot continue with this one here. And, um, well, I realized um, I actually have all those parts lying around here to finish those. I can't finish them without actually needing to buy new things. I already started 3D printing the housing and basically once that's done we can finish those iris keyboards. Yeah, let's go! <laughs> I know it sounds kind of weird to first dismantle the iris just to rebuild it again, but um, hear me out. I really wanted to use the Cherry MX Black switches for my new build, while I had a set of browns lying around and I really don't care where they end up. So while I'm waiting for the missing parts to arrive, uh, you know I ordered them from overseas because it's a lot cheaper, um, yeah, I might as well just use the time to finish the iris. Maybe I can give it another shot, you know, this, this ergonomic split keyboard thing. And <laughs> let's just see where it goes. So I hope you enjoyed the first part of this build. And see you guys in part two. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.